Sony's upcoming PlayStation Classic, Plastation Classic, has gone from an intriguing announcement to something that, on the cusp of its release, is just a bit... The PlayStation Classic's lineup of games is not the most impressive, many have been left underwhelmed by what's going to be in the box, and many would argue it's not exactly representative of the best of the original PlayStation era. Even worse than that, in news that's getting a few people to cancel their pre-orders now, it turns out that some of these games aren't even going to be the best versions of the games available because they're using the PAL version. Oh dear. Now the PAL version of the game is the version of the game that any of you European viewers would have grown up with. They are basically the shittier version. Put very simply, PAL runs at 50 hertz, whereas the NTSC standard that you're used to here in America runs at 60 hertz. What this essentially means is that games that I grew up with in the UK ran at a lower frame rate than games in the US. So while these games are going to run pretty much how I remember them as someone who grew up in the UK, for any of the US viewers it's going to be a lesser experience. And in any case, this PAL NTSC discrepancy was eliminated years and years and years and years and years ago since HDTV standardised everything across the world. So anyway, none of these games will be using the PAL versions. That's Battle Arena to Shinden, Cool Borders 2, Destruction Derby, Grand Theft Auto, Jumping Flash, Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, Resident Evil Director's Cut, Tekken 3, and Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. And all I've got to say in response to that list is thank you. God, Intelligent Cube has been left off that list and we'll get it running as it should. Thank God. The fact Tekken 3 is on that list has raised some eyebrows because of course that's a fighting game and people want their fighting games to run as well as they can and have the best frame rate available because, well, fighting game, innit? And just in case this hasn't been made clear enough, it doesn't matter where you buy your PlayStation Classic, if you're getting it in the US, those nine games will still be running at the PAL standard, not NTSC. All told, the PlayStation Classic just, well, it's just failing to impress people. Uh, reviews went up on some websites today. Uh, I had a look at one or two, and it seems like the, the physical PlayStation Classic, as an ornament, I guess, uh, the actual uh, remake of the little tiny console, uh, is well made, it's, it's well put together, but once you switch it on and, and have a look at the insides, it's all a bit... The interface for game selection and that looks a bit crap. The best you could say about it is it's functional. And again, that lineup of games just, well, it's a bit rubbish. Now, you were never going to be able to come up with a lineup that could please everybody, but some of the omissions are glaring. Your Crash Bandicoot, your Spyro, your Medieval. Coincidentally, all three of those games have remasters slash remakes either out or coming up. Hmm, Tomb Raider, Parappa the Rapper, or Rum Jammy Lemmy. Just a lot of games that people, like, ingrained associate with the PlayStation. They're just not there. The phrase bare minimum has come up a lot when discussing the PlayStation Classic, and that definitely seems to be what Sony's going for here. They've likely seen the success of the NES and the SNES Classic and thought, well, we're entitled to a piece of that pie. Let's just cobble something together. Don't put too much effort in it. Just do just enough. To make something we could reasonably sell. Wait a minute, on their FAQ they misspelled Odd World. Otto World? Otto World? Honestly, it reminds me that Sony's sitting on a mountain of gold when it comes to the PlayStation, and it's never put in the effort to capitalise on that. I've expressed frustration before about how Nintendo has all of these classic games under its wing and just drip feeds them to people with every new console it puts out. But the original PlayStation had an embarrassment of riches, and Sony's got good relationships with most publishers, that it could do some really special stuff, but this just doesn't look special at all. It just looks like a desperate cash grab, and not even a well thought out cash grab. Now I reserved one of these at the time of its announcement, and if I wasn't going to cover it for work I think I'd have cancelled it myself, but professional curiosity compels me to get one and at least do a video on it, you know, something like that. Oh, and Sony put paid to people's hopes that there'd be some sort of online connectivity where they could add new games to the system. They used the term preloaded when talking about these games, that was the thing that got people's hopes up. They they said these games were preloaded onto the system, which implies there might be the ability to load more in future, but Sony said no. Apparently they used the term preloaded for the sake of it. But Sony did at least confirm when you turn it on, it'll go... 
I can't do how that goes, but it makes that noise in the noise people like in the PlayStation. The noise. I will, of course, reserve full and frank judgment on the system until I get it into my hands myself. But I can't say I'm exactly chomping at the bit to get it. I'm not excited for when it drops onto my front door. It's just one of those things that became less and less of an enticing prospect the more we learned about it. You gotta know you've not made a great product when you put up an FAQ as Sony did yesterday and it's made people less hyped for the product to the point where, as we said at the top of the video, quite a few people have started cancelling their pre-orders. I'm not going to call it a hastily cobbled together half-baked moneymaker that's been shunted out before Christmas, until after I've played it, at which point I feel like I'm going to call it a hastily cobbled together half-baked Christmas cash bollocks. I mean, it does look okay for what it is. I don't know if it looks $100 okay. It just looks a bit cynical, like they didn't really try. Or maybe they don't feel they have to try because it's nostalgia and the NES Classic and the SNES Classic did so well. And this whole PAL situation seems to be evidence of that, like there was a discrepancy between these versions of the games in Americas and Europe's. And rather than try and fix that, they decided to save time and money and resources and just go, fuck it, PAL forever. Everyone. And that is the kind of thing you do when you're not out to actually come up with something that celebrates the PlayStation, providing a definitive PlayStation experience, and you're instead just out to make a quick buck. We shall see, of course, but the reviews are out there on the internet already, and they do seem to confirm that, that this is what it is. It's functional, and that's all it sets out to be. But thank God, Intelligent Cube is okay!